Thanks for staying with us for Denver 7 News at 5. I'm Ann Trujillo. And I'm Micah Smith. A new report from the Colorado Attorney General's office is revealing some shocking data regarding domestic violence in the state. Last year, 94 people died in Colorado in domestic violence related incidents. The AG's office has been tracking this information for seven years now. And this figure from 2022 is nearly one and a half times higher than average. The report also notes the number of collateral deaths in these cases is extraordinarily high relative to years past. Nearly a quarter of these deaths were victims who were trying to intervene. Denver 7 Sam Pena spoke to the state attorney general on the current plans to address the spike and to a Denver nonprofit on their efforts to provide support for survivors and victims families. The Rose Andam Center sees hundreds of families monthly fleeing domestic abuse, an issue the state says is now more pressing than ever. It's a process that's very challenging. For Margaret Abrams, it's a simple goal. Really trying to make it much easier for someone who's experienced intimate partner violence to access whatever resources they might need. Playrooms for children, legal advice, even plush toys in the interview rooms. Just a few of the resources domestic violence victims need at a crucial time. We've seen those numbers increasing sharply over the last few years. The state's latest domestic violence fatality review found 94 deaths, including six children from domestic violence in the past year. This is a call to action for us to understand why we've lost these lives, what we can do different, it's a record-breaking number that Attorney General Phil Weiser says requires change. Our current gun relinquishment law isn't working effectively. Weiser says 86% of domestic fatalities last year were from guns. As people simply check a box and say, I'm releasing my weapons, and there's no oversight or other measures to make sure that we're actually removing weapons from people we know are a grave risk. And that rural areas lack access to resources. We need to provide better services, and that's a big issue in rural areas, so that people who are suffering have a place to go. In addition to the data, the State Review Board gave three recommendations, including more risk assessment tools for organizations and law enforcement, helping them be trained on domestic violence situations, increased cooperation between state review agencies, and tougher gun laws for abusers. We all have a right to be safe, especially in our own homes. For Denver 7 reporting, I'm Sam Pena. And going in depth tonight, the AG's findings on these domestic violence cases are broken down in a variety of ways. One of those includes the relationship status in domestic incidents. 66% of couples were either married or dating when a deadly domestic violence incident broke out. Still, more than a third of these cases happen when the couple is broken up or estranged. And the data also indicates that dating couples were more likely to be broken up at the time of a violent incident, while married couples were more likely to still be married. Mm. Well, if you or someone you know is in need of support, the National Domestic Violence Hotline takes calls 24-7. The number's on your screen. Anything you share is confidential.